entire year and an email from from me. So put that in your, your calendar. Uh, those should be really, really good moving forward for 2023. Uh, as always, we have role play every morning, 7 a.m. here in this room or on Zoom and then morning ascent uh, right after 7.30. And that link is the same. I know some people have asked me, they said, I don't get the link or I'm not getting the text with that Zoom link. If you're not getting it, it's because you probably opted out and uh, Mikkel can get you opted back in. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay. Um, do we have any important mortgage news from our Inspiro partners? Anything groundbreaking? Still in. No. No. Rates are the same. Buy down okay. rates are a lot cheaper. So yeah. buy down like the price that was on today was for a full percentage point lower, about six grand. Wow. So yeah, rate six to ten grand will buy it down a whole point. So so buy downs are a lot less. That's a big deal. Yeah, That's a really big deal. So seller flipping costs can help you. Okay. Awesome. And we're seeing, I mean, I, I'm seeing a ton of seller closing costs across the board. It seems like almost every deal now is is seller closing costs. Great. Um, I think that's I mean, that's really it for, for announcements. Summit next week and, and the mastermind's coming up at the end of the month. Ruby, anything that you can think of? No, I heard you did not. Okay. Okay. We're, we're good. So, George? Wait, we're right. we going to do the drawing first. Oh, yeah. Let's do the drawing. We can have George. We're going to do the drawing before they've turned it like, They've turned it in. They've already turned it in. So, first two pages are filled out with their last year's numbers and then their gotcha. goals for this year. And those numbers should hopefully, well, not last year's, but the, the going forward stuff so should change if we go through the process. Yeah. Well, what I'm hoping is they'll, 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 they'll go up. Yeah. Bigger goals. All right. That morning after morning set yesterday, they should ask. That's right. That's right. Okay. You want to do the drawing, drawing sure. right now? Whatever, oh, yeah, whatever you want to do. Okay. All right. Okay. So again, 100 bucks, uh, Amazon. So it's the only way you get the room full. <laughs> Okay. Morning ascent. Morning ascent. Yeah, could you imagine, right? Okay, hold on. As we're mixing this up, and I'm seeing it, by the way. Hey, Morris. Hey. Who's feeling lucky? Okay, who's feeling right. lucky? Drum roll. All the people who put something in. Paul, did you put your name in? Come on. Did you? Cherry, is your name in here? Everyone that you? Yes or no? There you go. <laughs> it's a secret. Isaac Moore. Just kidding. I'm kidding. Patty? Domingo? 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 <laughs> One more question that, that before George starts, that, that Brenda mentioned, and something that we're focusing on as a leadership team is increasing the numbers in morning ascent. I know it's tough with snow and, and just distance, um, but myself, as well as George, Ruby, John, and the rest of the leadership team, we'll be reaching out and challenging each one of you to show up at least one day a week. And I think if we can do that, um, we'll have a lot of power in this room and it will make a massive difference in your life. Um, whether it's it's in person on Zoom, I think in person is just really powerful if you come here one day a week in person maybe on, on Zoom, but I encourage you to do that um, as we go through just the different different things that we're doing and getting back to the basics. So thanks again, guys. George. All right, guys. Hey, great to be with you guys. Good to see you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Uh, around the crowd here. Good to see you. Oh, yeah. Give me your name again. Davis. Davis. All right. All right. Um, all right. Just got to check out my group here. Motley crew. Terry, good to see you. All right. All right. Hey, so uh, and we have 28 online. So just all right. Here. Hello, everybody. So uh today, the primary thing, it's already hot in here, isn't it? It is hot. Yep. All right. Yeah. Uh, actually, Terry, if, 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 they, if you tell them, they'll actually turn it down a notch. Like they can do it like almost instantly, unless I don't think it actually it's it's computer generated. Uh, yeah. yeah, coats might have to come so, off. Hello, how are you? Good. All right, good to see you. I well, I will return that text. I promise. All right. <laughs> I promise. Same thing. I just I, I owe Jen a text. It's I'm 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 it's getting kind of a little crazy. This is true. It is true, I think. Yeah, you respond. I did? <laughs> See, I can't remember what I <laughs> Did I respond? Yes. Okay. 
All right. You just don't remember what he said. That's right. That's right. All right. Okay. So one of the things that I, I how, how many of you uh, have your business plan like uh, like what you consider completely done? I mean, is that all right? Cool. All right. So some of this will obviously be a refinement and adjustment. One of the things I've always believed is that a business plan is a working document. And it's something that you're going to reformulate, redo over and over again, especially when you see transitional markets like that we're in, you're going to see the transitions even within your business plan. And the hope is, is that just what I often find is within the adjustments of a market and the market conditions, what I see a lot of people doing is they'll change their goal before they change their approach. And I thought not that's a, maybe it's a new concept for some of you, but just, you know, think about that for a minute. Think about 2022 and just ask yourself, did you change your approach or did you change your goal? And which one did you change first? And usually what happens is we'll renegotiate our goals down because we don't want to change our approach. We'll fight having to change our approach. So just look at 2023. How many of you would agree that you have to change your approach? Anybody? Yeah. Everybody. The whole approach has to change. So in order for you to actually hit the same goals, the same objectives, to have the same achievement, you have to change something in regards to your approach. So as we start out today, what I first want to focus on is this idea. And whether you're on the team, is you're a team member, or whether it is that you're the team leader, I would just I, I would say that this is the same for you in this first statement. And that is this. I guess maybe more of a you are a CEO. The question is, is what are the two formal fundamental points and principles of, of a CEO? Does anybody know what number one is? Anybody? You were a CEO. Adam, what is, what's what, what weren't you? Yeah. You're the company, right? So what would you say was one of your number one objectives in your other company? Coming up with the vision. All right, there we go, right? So look, part of you, part of, that's number one, man, it's the vision. The You are the insurance policy to ensuring that the vision of an organization continues to go on. And I really believe that there's, look, and ask yourself where you are in your business. There's three, three levels, I believe, right now in any business, whether it's an individual agent, whether it's on a your team member or the team leader, whatever it is that you're doing, you have three things. You're either just been born and you literally are just into this business. And number two, you start to grow just like a human being. And then all of a sudden you hit that tipping point at 26 years old and you start dying. Just kidding. All right. Right. But you start dying. And so those are the three things that you see in businesses and you see them all the time. Like take a blockbuster or take a Hollywood video or take all, you know, the, the, all these different things that you see out there. You start to recognize that there is a birth, there's a time of growth and there's a time that a business dies. And so oftentimes it's been said that the longevity of a real estate agent is somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 years where they're really growing and they're not dying where they were just born and they're on this climb. So just you know, know where you are in that process. And once I became aware, like, whoa, hold, hold on a second here. You know, I, I know I'm not just been born. I certainly don't want to be dying. So man, how do I continue the growth? How do I continue the vision of what I'm creating? So part of your plan, right, the actual plan, is to have a clear vision. If you're the CEO, the chief executive officer, and you and I was here sitting in front of a bunch of shareholders, you would want to know what the vision is. You would want to know where we're going. You would want to know the process. You would want to know my expectations. And my job is to ensure the fact that this vision literally never dies. But the second component of that, of the CEO, is the financial side. Right, and you have two options in your from a financial side of it. Number one, your job is to, of course, make sure that there's cash flow, which is maybe obvious. And the second is that you continue to build assets, or you can even put savings. And my point is, is that look, business will go through cycles. We went through a long cycle, thirteen straight years, thirteen plus years, it going up. Traditional cycles last how long? How many? What's the what's a normal upward cycle in the U.S. economy over the last 100 years? How long many years does it last? Seven. Seven. That's actually yeah. So they say it's between six and seven, six and seven years. So the thing is, we just went two times the normal cycle. So all of a sudden, people start seeing changes. But here's the thing that I think great leaders do, and I'm going to write this down here again: change. The approach, and what I mean by approach, 
how you do your business, how you show up daily. That means the plan, the schedule, how you're accountable, what you do on a daily basis, the activities that you do. So change the approach well before, right? Before you change the goal. And the challenge is, is that if you don't figure that out, you'll be that individual, which is the norm in life, probably 95% of people who start adjusting their goals down because they haven't revisited the approach. They look outside themselves to change the approach. They look at the market. They look at the industry. They look at the inventory. They look at the interest rates. And although you should be aware of those because they help you on the financial side, right? They help you achieve and you know, ensure the vision. But most of those things aren't going to be fixed outside of you. And that's why I've said for years that I really think there's an epidemic in this industry or pretty much in humanity. And that is, is that we always look outside of ourselves for the problem to be solved. And yet most of the challenges that we have are fixed by what we do, not by what someone else does. And I just, I can't allow myself to be limited by the standpoint of what other people are going to do outside of me versus what I know I can control. So part of this is that CEO is, let me cast the vision. Number two, let's make sure we have the finances in line, either I'm from a, whether it's the funding, whether it's the daily activities, the cash flow, whatever it is, you have a responsibility. But let's just talk about one more thing here in vision. I said this either this week or last week to an agent. And I said these words, actually, who it was, where is, is Y in here? But I saw Y earlier. Oh, there you are. Okay. I said this to Y last week. I said, why, what is the most important thing that you can do? I don't care whether you're talking about your family. I don't care whether you're talking about a relationship or a marriage or a partnership. I don't care whether you're talking about this business or whether it's the amount of things that you're going to accomplish. This is the key to being a great leader and a great CEO. And that is this. You better make sure that your vision is big enough. Now, you may say, well, what do you mean by that? What I mean by that is that people stay with people, so especially all these team leaders in here. People stay with people who can see, uh, go with me on this, who can, the, they, they can see their vision contained in the other vision. Meaning that the leader's vision is big enough that they sit and go, wait, I can accomplish my vision of my life under that vision. I've been asked many times over the years, how have you retained such strong leadership over these many years? How is it that whether it's a Ruby or a Nick or my own daughter, Kenzie, and all these other, Gretchen Smoot in May is 17 years by my side. I mean, I mean, I couldn't do Math 105, or now it's called 1105, just for the record. But she was accepted to MIT and to Harvard. And here's this woman who stands by my side for 17 years. Why? Because the vision is big enough that it, it allows her to live out her vision in yours. And so if you are a team leader that is turning and burning people, I can promise you it has so much to do with the vision that you're casting. Is it big enough that the people around you can see themselves in their life, living out their vision inside of your vision. And again, I go back to that applies to your children. It applies to your life. It applies to this, this, this business that we're in. Is your vision big enough? And I'm not talking about getting wacko with your vision. I'm not talking about being silly with your vision. I'm talking about legitimately, is it big enough? And do you talk about it enough? Okay. So next point on vision. And, and just obviously this, we've gone back. I just want to just share a few more things on this. Everybody forgets where they're going, even you. If, 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 if I could just echo to you that you forget, you forget. And so the key is your job as a leader in your own life, in your family and those you love and this business and those you lead and your clients, your sellers, your buyers, they forget. And if you, if you remember that, Although it may seem trite, it may seem silly that you have to repeat where you're going and where you're taking people. If you forget where you're going, I'm telling you, your business will perish. Just like that great statement, the good old book, right? Where there is no, where there is no vision, why you said it, the what? 
People perish. He said that to me sitting at at my desk last week. That's what happens. So again, I get just get just get so clear on that vision. Because if you aren't clear on that vision and it's not big enough, then people are going to rotate through. They got to be able to see themselves in your presence. And they've got to be able to know that it's big enough that they want to be a part of it. And when you start realizing that, all of a sudden you start speaking to it differently because people forget. And I and I was and why I just uh, since we had this great conversation about this stuff earlier this week is he said these words, and it's what I truly believe, and that is that this is the greatest gathering of real estate professionals the world has ever seen. How many believe that? I believe that. If you're in here, you better believe it, right? Right. But my point is, is that I believe that. And I will never forget, in fact, why, because you know, you've worked so close, you're such a dear friend, but Dave Parker, I can remember, he came to me not too many years ago, a few years ago, and he said, hey, you really actually believe that, don't you? And I'm all, yeah, I actually believe it's the greatest gathering. And I really believe that. I mean, again, you look at the volume, $50 million of commissions were paid out this last year from this organization to just you guys, which is awesome. $50 million. So congrats to that. So as you move through this, just remember, if you aren't casting the vision, if you aren't recasting the vision, if you've forgotten about the vision, if people don't know where they're going, they start getting deterred. Look, let's just be candid here. When you saw all of the changes that Everest was making, did anybody shudder just for a second? Go, whoa, where are we going? Just think about that for a minute. Like, what did you feel when you saw all these different changes occurring? Well, if there was all those changes occurring, and if I didn't keep recasting the vision, recasting the vision, and if I didn't have a chance to talk to you, then you started crafting your own vision of what you thought Everest was or wasn't doing. Because the vision has to always be spoken of. So don't underestimate it. Don't get tired of it. Don't get sick of it. Don't think, oh, I'm sure you know where we're going. I'm sure you know what we're doing. Do you? Even today, people were kind of shocked as I was walking around the second floor, third floor, who went, oh, well, there you are again. I'm like, yeah, I said I'd be here. So things are kind of back to normal. Kind of, yeah. I like yelling at you. Why aren't you prospecting? Right? I mean, that's the whole point is that we didn't change the goal of the company. We just changed the approach. I just want to remind you of that. We changed the approach. I didn't change my goals. My goals are to absolutely dominate in this market. Greatest gathering in the market. Do what we do as an organization and where we've always done it. And we will do it better. We will do it faster. We will do it more effectively. We will do it. It's like lead-in music for this, Lisa. I think my phone broke. It doesn't shut down at all. Ever? Ever. <laughs> I can fix that. I can fix that. I can fix that. I can tell you a quick little story. Yeah. It starts with me and my, putting it in my palm with a hand in the corner of a counter. <laughs> it was real quick and easy. It was over. It was like a two-day-old foam, too. That was, it was awesome. I don't think he thought it would ever happen, but it happened. All right. Do you want to share that story? <laughs> See, we have to shut down phones in here, right? All right. Okay. Uh, any thoughts, comments to that? Yeah, I know there's a ton of experience in here. I'm honored. That so many of you are in here. Anybody? Any thoughts? Okay. So, for a moment, just from a place of exercise, because we talked about this being more of a true blue workshop where people are getting things done. I would love it if you pull, I don't care if you want to pull it out and put it on your phone in your notes section. I don't care if you put it in your journal. I don't care if you just want to write it on the, the back of the, but I just would love it. If you were to cast a vision, what is the vision of your business? What does it look like? Yes, there's the economics. I'm going to earn this much money, but what's the purpose behind that vision? What does it mean to you? Why does it matter if you sell any homes? Why does it matter if you help any families? Why does it matter if you prospect? What's the reasons behind what you do? Now, one of the things that I, just if you can, write down this question, because this is relative to it. Because a vision has a lot to do with purpose. So if you were asking me, what is the purpose of Everest? I said this to agents this morning. It's one thing to help you become your very best in every single area of your life. 
I am so always touched by the amount of people that come to me and say, I'm a better dad. I have a better relationship with my daughter. I'm a better mother. You know, I have better health. I'm better in my church and religious stuff I do. I'm better. I am better in every area of my life because I align myself with Everest. Because at the end of the day, I can just promise you on a personal level, I do not care one iota as to how much money you earn. I don't care. I haven't cared whether, you know, frankly, this guy had left of me over here, whether he was making a hundred grand or a million plus dollars a year like he does. It doesn't matter to me. But what I do care about is who he is and who he becomes. And, I, and that's all I care about. And what I have found in my own world is that if I care about that, then everything else takes care of itself. So don't lose sight of the purpose of what drives you. Your vision is your purpose. Your vision is who you are and why you're that person. So this is the question. Write this down. Write this, this question. What is it that I'm doing? What is it that I am doing when my life what is it that I am doing when my life feels purposeful? What is it that I'm doing when, in my life when my life feels purposeful? Now, that question for me changed the whole course of my life. Because people used to ask me, what's the purpose of your life? And I'd be like, oh, I better go sit on a rock. Figure that out. No. No. What I realized and this is a true story, and I usually always make fun of my stories with Isaac in the room, but this one's not. This is really was a touching moment, and the touching moment was is that my life felt purposeful when we would, on a snowy day, just like the, these days have been, that we would be in the circle of our home, the circle, the cold sack of our home, or our home is, and we were throwing the baseball and, you know, gnawing up these, these balls and you know, to tearing them up on the asphalt, and we were, I felt purposeful. So just ask yourself the question, when is it I feel most purposeful almost always gives you the purpose to your life? Well, part of my purpose in my life is to be a father, to have relationships with my sons and my daughters. That certainly is part of my purpose, my example, how I live my life, how I strive to do good. And by just for the record, because I seem to be one of the more judgmental human beings on earth, not me judging you, you judging me, as I'm not here to tell you I have any perfection. If you want to talk to Isaac or Kenzie or Jennifer, they can certainly tell you all the things I do wrong, which is a lot, right? But my point is, is that that's what makes my life purposeful. So as you move through your own world and your own life and you're asking yourself the same question, just get clear on what is it the vision and the purpose of what drives you. And once you start getting really clear on that, well, then it's really easy to see, well, this is how much money I need to earn. Well, then all of a sudden, every phone call, every door knock, every late evening, early, every early morning, every action that you take becomes more purposeful because it matters. And sometimes we are in this business of lending and selling real estate and what we do. And it's like we sit back and we're like, man, does it even matter? Well, it, it doesn't matter if you lose sight of the vision. But when you have a clear vision and purpose to your life, everything that you do today matters. Just as I walked out at 5, no, 4.45 this morning, and I walked out and I looked up to the sky and I said, find me one person to make a difference. And you know what I said, Lord, is I said, correction, help me find many people today that I can make a difference for. That's, that's what wires me. Because in the end, what is it that is driving you? Because if it's just economics, I can tell you, that's great for survival, to survive, but it's not enough. It won't carry you into, you know, all the stories that I can tell of the Amy's and the Justin's and others that I know that I've watched them persevere through such difficult moments. Or what is it that takes them to that next level? Right? What is it that makes them show up? What is it that makes a, a Lutran show up and say, I'm going to go do more? Why? It's not, what is it food and shelter? You know what's fine, kind of funny is we haven't moved for 18 years. I mean, you did a little remodel, but how many times, how many years do you live in your home, Justin? Four years, the other one was 15. I mean, right, and the, but aren't you right near the other one? Where you have, Next door. Next door. 
my 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 point. I, I know, right? But that's my but but that's my point. All of a sudden, that's not what's driving you. See, some of you are driven by I want this and I want that. I want to buy this, and I'm not saying that that's not fun. But I am telling you, there is deeper purpose behind your life. And when you find that, you go way beyond the houses and the cars and a little bit of savings or you know, a few investments. You go way beyond that because it becomes so much more important because the vision slash purpose is so much more meaningful. Okay, so with that, what we're going to do is we're going to do these little intermittent breaks. What I mean by that is um, Ruby has agreed to help me with this as my AV technician, right? And now she, I just put her a little nerves there, right? She's like, wait, hold on a second here. But we're going to throw out some music. And I just want you to take two to three minutes. And, just, and then we're going to write. And we're going to do this stop and go little portion as we move through this. Stay with me. And when I mean stay with me, I mean like stay fully engaged. And I always say this, like watch in your life. Like where else do you check out? And if you're checking out a lot, it's showing up in other areas of your life. It's checking. If you're checking out here, you're checking out at home. If I, I'm telling you, people check out. So this is about you. It's not about me. I want you to live your best life. So start writing your vision. And if a few people are open to that, I would love it if a few people would share. But what's the purpose or what gives your life purpose or what's the vision of what drives you to do what you're going to do this year? Did you know that? Nothing's going to stop you. No market, no rates, nothing. Sounds good. But just as you're, you know, you can continue to add to this. But I, I want to get two extremes. Um, and what I mean by that is I want to I want to I want to focus for a moment on someone who's new or just being born in this business. Uh, I want to talk about I want to get someone who's growing and we probably won't pick on the people who are dying. So <laughs> we're not really interested in your death in this business. Okay. So so Let's just let's just start with someone brand new in this business, and this is not a competition. But Lisa, just if, you, if anything you would could share about your purpose or what drives you, um, I'm here to learn because in the end, that's all you're going to take with you is what you learn, not not your friends, not your kids. You might leave them behind, but you need to learn. That's what yeah. you take. 
I talked to Ruby about a book we had in common. The takeaway from that book is if you have the why, the how will follow. Yeah, well said there. Yeah, in the words of someone, uh, John Aubrey was just saying, it was reminding me of Les, Oltz, or Les Brown's uh, statement, which was, how is none of your business? Right. Right, right. It, it, it's, it's a reminder that the how becomes the filter as to what we think we can achieve. And if we will just delay the how for a moment. It's there. Right, exactly. It's there. Well said, I love it. I love the emotion behind it. Aubrey, let me pick on you. You're fairly new into the industry, right? Yeah. Um, why? What's your purpose? What's the reason? What's the vision? Um, my family. I'll give you them happy to that. And I, and I kind of look a, a little ahead a lot. Um, Good. My son's his back at home. Uh, him being adopted, you know, give him a life. You can have, you know, hope. You can have, you can see, you know, what the hard work it does and having him be happy. So. Yeah. Well, I've watched your work ethic. That makes now a little bit of sense. I love it. Makes me choked up hearing it. That's <laughs> awesome. It's great, man. So that's the, that, that that's interesting. Now I want to turn the corner. I, I Justin, let's go to the extreme other angle of it. Not new. How many years in the business now? Well, be seventeen this year. Seventeen. March. I remember. I mean, I, 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 in fairness, I remember uh, Justin is truly a new licensee, and you were doing a little bit of lending, I think, even at the time, weren't you? If I recall. Yeah. 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 So Back in the days, the good old days of realty executives. Yeah. So what? Why? Why do you keep going? Uh, What's your vision? Yep, yep. So the vision is, is to, I mean, and again, breaking it down into compartments, right? For the business was just like, help our clients build wealth through real estate. That's our number one vision. Help them be the most educated buyers and sellers on the market and investors. So that's that's the vision. Um, and then for the team. It's, what? You can ask, and why is that important? Um. So just this exercise right here, just like, even though it seems like so trite, so come on, are you treating me like I'm a little kid? No, but, uh, it, but you start getting it like, so why is that important? Yeah, uh, it's important because just like, I feel like this meeting, like the education, the information we receive, it just, it doesn't, people don't learn it. They don't know it. And so I just feel like we have a calling to be able to like inform and educate and help them understand the dynamics of how their life can be completely different just just by making a few changes yeah. you know and then that leads into obviously with a team of, of that same difference it's like what can you give them that they're not getting and why is that important to you to your team get, to the people yeah i mean frankly so that they can get more out of i mean they don't have to spend they don't have to go through the pain we did. They can get the information, education, all the stuff they can right now. They don't yeah. have to go through 17 years. Of, and why is that important? So they can accomplish what they want to accomplish. You know, they have all the tools available. You can lean into them and give them everything you have. But why is that important to you? Um, I just think so they can have a better life. So they can they don't have to go through the pain. Right? That's why it's why does it matter to you? Um uh why are you driven for it so hard why is it that i you know thought you were on cocaine when you were sniffling so hard knocking doors in the middle of an inversion and uh you're golf you're out there with a golf ball knocking doors in the middle of the winter and i'm like what are you doing he's like <laughs> why i should guess i just say I, I, the, the purpose is to give them more right i guess just what does that do for you i think it it validates a lot of your hard work. I think it makes you, I don't want to make this say you feel wise, but it's like you have something to give. Yeah. Um, what else is that? Why would that be? How does it make you feel? No, it makes you feel, it feels like you feel fantastic. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I'm going to try again, be, be uh, I, mean, I, I, I love hearing it actually. Yeah. And I'm reminded, uh, you know, if those of you, and of course, many of you in here, I know have been like a Tony Robbins event, but it's a great reminder that the two greatest fears of one's life 
aside from public speaking, just kidding, but that's what they say. But the two greatest fears are, will I be loved and will I be needed? Those are the primary driving forces of our life. Will I be loved? Will I have a sense of belonging? Right? And number two, in so many words, will I be important? Will I have made a difference? Will it matter that I was here? So now all of a sudden you start, when you start listening to adjusting, you start hearing legacy. You start hearing what even a Maslow might talk about, self-actualization, right? If, and that is, is going out beyond yourself. I mean, I know full well, just because of our closeness of our friendship, he could retire today. He doesn't have to be here. Right. So he's, you know, in, in fairness, right. Aubrey, he's, he's not right where it's like, wait a second, here, I got to provide for my family. He's in a place of, okay, now what's the legacy for my family? And you kind of did a combination of both. Right. And you'll make that movement as you move through. But all of a sudden, just, you know, you feel the emotion of Lisa, Aubrey, and even the sincerity of, of Justin. All of a sudden you start going, wait a second here. What if I didn't forget about that when I prospected? And what if I didn't forget about it when I was working maybe a little longer than I really felt like I wanted to? And what if all of a sudden every day became more purposeful because you kept that at the forefront of the difference that each one of us are going to make or who we're going to be as a father or mother or how we're going to give back with our time, energy or resources or economics? It changes everything. Everything becomes more purposeful. And all of a sudden, life becomes much more joyful. Like you said, you know, he, 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 I'm going to feel good. You're going to feel like, hey, I, I did something here. Don't escape this because it's the core. So now let's let's switch gears here. And then thank you guys for unless anybody else have anything they want to add or share. Anybody? Okay. So again, yeah, write this down. Goals are the stepping stones to living out your vision and purpose. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means that a good example is that your goals are not your purpose. You're not going to sit on your deathbed or lay on your deathbed and stay, and you're laying there and someone again says to you, just, I just need to know the purpose of your life. And you say, well, to sell 50 homes. <laughs> That is not the purpose of your, I mean, we all know that, right? But somehow we make the, we, we confuse. And it took me a lot of years to figure out the difference between a goal versus my vision slash purpose. And all of a sudden, when I started to realize, wait a second, the goals, the stepping stones to living out my purpose. See, the more wealth or abundance or the example, Aubrey, that you make or the things that you take with you, Lisa, all of a sudden that becomes the purpose, which then drives you towards the achievement of these goals because of the great words of the late Jim Rohn when he was asked, which I said earlier this morning, when he was said to by Earl Schof, his mentor, he said, hey, you should go earn a million bucks. And his response was, I like that idea, but I want to first tell you and ask you, we'll ask you why. You guys almost all know the answer. And he said, oh, it's not about the million bucks. It's about what? Who you become. And that becomes the driving force. So as we as we move through this little bit of this goal set exit, just, just ask yourself, have you confused your purpose with your goals? Purpose of your life is not to make money. I mean, maybe some of your purposes, if, I mean, I might catch someone and I get into, well, tell me why that's important. And all of a sudden you get deeper into it. Well, I want to go make a major difference. I want to go give money away. I want to help this charity, this foundation. I want to help these people. I want to help my parents. And all of a sudden we get into this depth. And all of a sudden it's like, whoa, hold on a second here. So prospecting and We've had some great conversations about this, April and I, and I challenge well, anybody I sit down with in this night, when I get into this vision and I'll say, what does this mean to you? And you want the word I'm looking for is? What am I looking for, April? What word am I looking for? Everything. 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 And I think that when you can realize that your purpose means everything, then all of a sudden you go to a whole different level of connection and activity. You go to a whole other different level of, of driving your life towards something because what it is that you're doing means everything. And if you haven't found it, you may say, well, I'm not sure. Just again, go back to what is it that you're doing when your life feels more purposeful? And I don't care whether it's, you know, it's a, it's a lacrosse game, right, Zach? I don't care whether it's driving a great car, right, Alan? 
Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Exactly, yeah, right? Yeah, you may, you may, right? I know this guy likes guys car, but it, it's it's all of those things. But all of a sudden, everything starts to feel a little bit more purposeful. And it makes sense to show up earlier. It makes sense when you're like, oh, gosh, I don't want to be there at that time at 7 a.m. I mean, is there oxygen even turned on in the building at 7 a.m.? I'm just here to tell you there is. All right, there is. And the thing is, you start realizing, man, I better not confuse these two. Because if you confuse them, your life will be confusing. Because what will happen is this. So write this down. The most important principles that Ms. Sherry Peck and Amy Clark taught me in my lifetime. You ready for how important? Why, why, like, wow, huh, Sherry, right? But you know, I bet you already know what I'm going to say. And that is that my goals have to be in connection to my values. When I met these fine young ladies, I would speak, you know, hell on fire, brimstone, let's go, let's go, let's go. How much more business can we do? And I'd have one or two of them or me at the same time come up and go, okay, hold on, time out. I've got all these other responsibilities that are important to me, from being a mother to everything else that I'm doing in my life. And you're scaring me because I feel like, and this was what was interesting, was a teaching moment for me. I, they said, I feel like I'm disappointing you if I don't achieve 50 deals. I'm like, whoa. So we made a deal. I'm always going to speak as if it's 50, but here's the good news. Some of you will set goals that trample your greatest values. So as we're going to, we're going to take some minutes here and we're going to write down some of these goals. I want you to think about something. First, we're going to do this. I want you to write down what's most valuable to you. What means the most to you? What is it that if you didn't have it, well, it wouldn't matter maybe even how much money you earned. Because here's the great tragedy of humanity. You see people achieve all these extraordinary economic goals or goals that they drive their life at every single moment of their life towards, and they forget about what they value most, or maybe it's the value is the goal, but they get to the top of the mountain of success, and there they are at the top of the mountain, or in Utah mountain. Did you say that right? Did you say that right? I try to correct it. Bro, who's not from Utah originally? All right. Melt versus milk. Yeah, it's not with a T. Pillow. Pillow versus pillow. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. That's a constant conversation. In fact, but you're at the top of the mountain. By the way, that was, that was Kenzie who began correcting me as she went to college. She says, you sound like too much of a Utah up there. Right? Probably still do at every level, although they always think I'm from the East Coast, and I'm not quite sure why they think that. And as a fact, oh, come on, that's ridiculous. I'll be in Brooklyn, they say you must be from Jersey. I'm in Jersey, they go, you must be from Brooklyn. I'm like, no, Salt Lake City, Utah. And they're like, drop a few, you know, words of, of uh, you gotta be kidding me. I'm like, uh, no, not really. I haven't lived anywhere but Utah. So, but it's the Lithuanian in me, I'm sure of it, right? All right, that Eastern Bloc. Solid. All right. So here we go. So values, right? You're at the top of the mountain with all your goals achieved, and you're standing up there all alone. Now, just think about the people that you know who have achieved extraordinary wealth and income, and they stand completely divided with their values and their goals. They have all the money, yet none of the relationships. All the success that one would classify but no relationships with their children. I just want you to think about when you set these goals, and I remember it with Amy and Sherry, I said, how good is it to know that you could, but you choose not to, because you value other things so much more than maybe that goal? I want you to just, just think about that again. Choose wisely what you choose. Because if you are compromising your greatest values for long periods of time, I can live with even short-term, hey, I can't be home or I can't spend time or I can't do short windows, but long-term sacrifice of your greatest values is a death wish of absolute poverty emotionally and relationships. So just make sure that you clearly understand what do I value? Is it time? Is it time with someone you love? Is it even your alone time? Is it 
what you devalue your relationship with your creator and yet you've created so much chaos you can't even hear straight because you have such a fixation on I gotta achieve this goal i gotta achieve this goal i gotta achieve this goal so just make sure that as you're moving through this that you get really clear so here's the deal we're gonna spend three minutes and i just want you to write as fast as you can as many things that you value as you do whatever it is i don't care if it's you value love do you value an individual do you value an organization do you value a religion do you value a, a, a you know a, a trip a, a certain place a, a place where you go value what do you value okay go three minutes What is most important to you? What do you value most? You have 50 more seconds. What do you value? So just want you to think about something. So let me give you something that's important to me when I started to realize, I mean, there's a number of reasons I could give you, but let me give you the most important reason that you have seen all the changes in Everest's approach. Number one, above all things, and I'm going to try not to choke up and tear up. My daughter turned 16 last week, Bella. Some of you know Bella, she's worked the front desk here and there. For the last 12 months, she's a little basketball, little superstar. Probably the best athlete in the family. <laughs> That's, you know, see these two laughing. There's just a little competition in my family if you haven't figured that out yet. But, um, but she has a little dynamite, little point guard. Do you want to know how many games I've been of Bella's in the last 12 months? Do you want to guess? Three. One. One. 
That's why I changed my approach because this matters more to me than that. See, I used to have, I'll have a $100 million company, 1,200 agents, multi-state. Ah, okay, yeah, that's great. Did it. Went, holy crap. So now what became so clear, it's not a reason I don't repeat. There's a reason I repeat this statement to you. When you are climbing the ladder of success, just make sure your ladder is up against the right building. Remember that. What is crazy to me is it took me to that extreme of a level to recognize, whoa, my ladder is not leaning up against the right building. That is not what I want my life to look like. And so I've been fortunate over these last several years to be able to unwind some of those things. And I've been fortunate that I've been able to do that. And I would just challenge you that that's what values matter or why they matter. That's why it matters to me. I'll never forget even the conversation of Justin when he was at a panel. He got very emotional and he talked about the changes in his business. Because what he realized is the way he had put his business together need to be changed. Remember that? He talked about the fact he realized, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but he said, I'm not being the father I want to be. Is that fair? So he changed his approach. Like, wow. Because he valued something more than the goal. And what I have found is that when you don't lose sight of your value, here's what's fun. He changed his approach, but he didn't change his economic goals. He just changed the approach. So there's a great lesson in that. Don't underestimate the importance of your values, but you can also achieve your goals if you don't lose sight of your values. So I'm just curious. I want to, if I could pick on just a few of you. Joanna, what's one of your greatest values? My family. Your family? You gonna elaborate a little? <laughs> my husband. Okay. My children, my grandchildren. What do you value about them? I value their love. I um, <clears throat> I like knowing that I can make a difference in their lives, their quality of life. Yeah, it's awesome. Which makes prospecting a little more purposeful, mm -hmm. I would suspect. Right, if you don't lose sight of what you value most. Right. Amy Clark, what do you value? <laughs> oh boy. Well, I can I make a comment first? No. <laughs> yes, so, of course. As I was making this list of what I value, I was realizing how my values have changed. Mm -hmm. And they've just evolved, they're not better than another, but I was thinking back to when I was a single mom with a bunch of kids and I valued food and shelter and being able to make, you know, the bills work. And I didn't pay every utility every month, you know, and those, um, that was really important to me for that. And now my goals are different. I don't think about if, where I'm going to, you know, if I'm going to eat or if I can pay my, which utility pay, you know, bill I'm going to pay now. I have different goals with my kids. And I was just thinking about people in the room, you know, that are starting off and some of some of us struggle and see big numbers here all the time. But there's there's chapters in your life that have to be fulfilled with where you are. And those were important values back there to to give them food and shelter. I mean, that was a, a real thing. And your time. Going to you but, uh, know, and, and your time. Secondhand stores, selling up the clothes to make them, you know, to make them work and um and then also, I just want to make sure because that was important because that, I mean, it really, it was you and Sherry that this from this principle of just because I can doesn't mean I should. So not only were you providing economically, but you also needed to provide your time to your point, a different season, different chapter in your life. Right, And, and, it, it and that's, and that's the beauty of that. When you're clear on that, it makes the goal setting, the planning so much easier. And my goal at that time was that, I mean, I had to work a lot. But was I was going to look at each one of my children every single day in the eyes once. That was the goal is just to have a connection where I said something to them while I looked at them in the eyes. And now the goals are different. You know, they're I don't think about those particular things, I think about other experiences. But so what's something valuable to you today? 
Um, and they do change. I, I totally yeah, agree. Like sometimes we forget about our health and all of a sudden we have a problem with our health and guess what becomes your number one value? <laughs> all of a sudden your health, right? It, it shifts, changes. And and it, they still are the same thing, a similar thing. So I care about my family, I care about, um, you know, have a great relationship with my spouse. I'll make sure I protect that. And the, the things I want with my children are, are memorable experiences, you know, that we can... Um, you know, like last thing for life, and lots of other things too, but, awesome. but it just evolves over time, and it's okay to be where you're at. It is and not feel bad about that. Yeah, as long as it's not where you don't want to be. Right, and keep going forward. Right, yeah. right, Zach. Yeah. What do you value? You're a young dad. Oh boy. A two year old and a four year old, if I recall. Am I right? Two year old. Yeah. A what? One year old. One year old and a four year old. Four year old. Okay. Holy shit, they're in. <laughs> <laughs> what do you value i mean you're in the prime of man i gotta go make it happen um i think i mean them obviously and then uh my relationship with my wife are the easy answers right easily at the top of the list um and it is okay if that's the answer then i would just want okay now give me depth to what that means to being the husband or the father that you want to be so um we met well what was that last week um no, but we met last week, um, and something that's changed a bit. So my mother was diagnosed with cancer last week. Oh. Um, so that shifts things a lot too, right? Sorry. Yeah. Um, so spending more quality time with her, and uh, damn, I'm sorry. Um, just spending more time with my family, right? Quality time, less time chasing buyers or, you know, working. And I mean, last night I was, I was working until nine o'clock. I probably shouldn't have, probably couldn't push it off, you know, but so that's, that's one of those big things that's really stood out for this, with this. Yeah, dude, that's powerful. All of a sudden, Man, hold on a second. I better shift. I better make sure my goals are in alignment because I got some things that are really valuable because there's a, a mortality to our world, isn't there? It's awesome, man. That's the beauty of it. All of a sudden, you start looking at your plans or your goals or what you want to achieve, and um, it puts perspective, you know? I mean, uh, over this last Christmas break, gosh, uh, one of our former agents down in St. George is... Seven-year-old son died on Christmas morning. On Christmas Eve, another son went with his dad to a car dealership that he owned and took his own life. And his son found him, who's 20 years old. You start looking at like the magnitude of all these things. And you're like, whoa, whoa, hold on a second here. What do I value most, right? What is it I value most? And I get that we almost all know it. But then you see it and you see people sacrifice the most important values of their life. And they show up with a big bank account. But I'm here to testify to you. You can have both. You can absolutely have both. This is someone's hand here, Terry, and then John. Yeah. So on my list of what I value most, time with my family is so the place top of the list. And um, family was travel. And um, my husband and family know that when I travel with them is when my business really picks up. <laughs> and so and it's a whole different vibration of who you yeah, are right yeah i think so, there's some truth to that so it's interesting that you know i'm i'm with my family and i have to make choices because i'm trying to spend quality time with my family but then i have so much coming at me and it's trying to find that balance between yep you know, between focusing and being present for your family at that moment, but then also trying to navigate the business. Yeah, yeah. You know, if I if, if anyone said, "Hey, how do I change something?" How it all the, the first the first rule of change. I remember I read it. If you guys haven't read it, it's a great book to read, which is "The Secrets of the Millionaire Mind" by uh, T. Harv Eker. I mean, I've read it who knows how many times and. I still will never forget in that the opening chapters, if someone wants to change, change comes because of an awareness. And so all of a sudden, to your point, 
you start to realize, wait a second here, I've become aware. And I hope that there isn't some, even some awareness in this room where you sit and you become more reflective, more conscious, more awake, more, more clear so that if you want to make a change, you know, you can't because in the words of the late Jim Rohn, he goes, you're not a tree. If you want to move, move. Right? If you want to do something different, do it. There's a reason why you are the most sophisticated, although it may not seem like it at times when you have teenagers, human or the most you know, incredible thinking, deriving human being or thing on the planet. No offense, but you're not a teenager anymore, Isaac, so you don't even apply to you. All right? John. Is the speak to the power of values and how it can actually add and enhance people. Uh, it was eight years ago uh, we were doing a meeting, a morning meeting, and you asked everyone what their goal for the year was. And eight years ago, my answer was, I will get married this year. And I've only been on a handful of issues on now. life. Um, before that, it was not uncommon for me to be here in the office at 7 30, and, and yeah, I'd go out and have lunch, I can do phone calls in there. But I wouldn't go home. It wasn't common that I didn't go home until 7 or 8 at night. And the amount of money I made. When courting my wife was phenomenally more than any year I did, probably all combined. And I guarantee you, I wasn't staying there until seven years at night. I had the things I needed to get done. I had a day to go on. You definitely have to do the next well, you vibe, you, you, your whole your whole body vibrates at a whole different level when you're in alignment. Said if if you sacrifice your values for a short time, it can be fine. But if you do a long time, it's detrimental. So, what my question is is what constitutes the difference between a short time and a long time? I, I can, I just, I, this is my best example. And I, and I just want, it's the example I've used for, for years. And it was when I, in 2007, I had uh, sold my interest in, in realty executives, uh, which was a real estate broker. So you don't even know that, but, and I sold it. And I remember I went to Jennifer and I said, Hey, uh, it's going to be a rough 90 days to get my business up and running. I think I'm going to have to work somewhere between 80 and as many as 90 hours a week. And I want to do that for three months. And with your permission, I went and like, well, she's like, yeah. And I said, now the reward of that is we're going to go to Hawaii. She's like, well, like it. Sounds great. <laughs> well, well, John, and, and this is a, a really fair statement that about, I don't know, 60 to 90 days into that, I went, whoa, guess what? I need another 90 days because I am not where I want to be in regards to how I want the momentum of my business to go. And so I remember... Uh, I said, hey, guess what? I need another 90 days. And so what I've typically done is I've worked in 30, 60, and 90 day windows. And when I talk about values, I'm not talking about, of course, fidelity. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about, you know, the relationships and the integrity of them. I'm talking about usually what it is that you're doing with your time right. and how much time are you willing to sacrifice to get the momentum or that locomotive to start going down the track. And so for me, I've just found that in that 30, 60, 90 day window, I can usually get the momentum in business, the direction that I want it to go. And once I get it going, I'm able to then say, okay, does this align with my, with my values? But I think it's something that we have to be conscious of our whole lives, because as I just told you, here I am 51 years old. And three years ago, I realized, holy cow, I'm not, I'm not where I want to be physically where I want to be, where I want to show up in relationship to myself as a father. And so I had to realign that and, 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 and change my approach. And, and that approach took me nearly three years, which may seem shocking to all of you that like when all of a sudden I'm, you know, selling California and doing all these different things. And it's like, man, for me, that was part of a grand plan that 
I wanted to have done within three years and we didn't like two and a half. So part of it was really honoring again, what do I value most um, from that? So that, that's what's worked for me. And, and, and then six months later, we ended up going Hawaii. I don't know if you remember that. That's where we found out Isaac was afraid of water by the way <laughs> and that do you remember that tragic moment when i still threw in yes See? <laughs> he remembers it john do you remember how he was crying no. <laughs> what are you talking about do you really remember the pirate ship see he remembers it was so tragic justin so oh that's right anybody been on the road to hana oh yeah just a little windy oh. Kenzie is a master of catching throw up in a paper bag, or not paper bags, <laughs> plastic bags. We don't pay. Yeah. All right. Okay. That's the, the beauty of being an older sister. All right. Any other thoughts, questions? Okay. So just so we don't run out of time, what I want to do now is we're going to take, and I just turned down the volume just so you know on the music right there. Um, but I just, what I want you to do is I want you to take just a moment now. Now that you have just a, and it, we, there's more, you, you could say, you could go through all those values. We don't have time to do it, but you could go through and say, okay, out of these, values which ones do i value the most i would encourage you to do that like as you wrote down all those values which ones matter the most all of a sudden you start identifying that and then second now let's go to some goals and what i, what I want you to do in regards to the to the to the goal setting one of my favorite pardon oh did you have a comment a question yeah no, well, please well, go i was going to share with you uh the the values so three years ago when i was what and it's also I've become a regret in my life. Um, so three years ago when I was pregnant, I find out I was pregnant. I was never enjoying my pregnancy. Uh, it become a burden. Like I feel it was a burden to me. And I never, when I, after I get birth, three days, I stopped to work. I didn't take any break, anything. I wasn't enjoying being a mom. What? And then when you ask that question today, I wrote down my value is to spend more time with my son. Mm. Because um, when I have a kid and only once, and I was never married, so I thought, you know, that was not different in my culture. It wasn't part of the plan? It wasn't a plan. Women supposed to get married, then have a kid. Right? It was and, somebody's plan. <laughs> and and so I and when I think about it and I was like, wow, you know, I worked all this three years and my son just turned three. And I never actually spent a day or two with him, 24 hours. That actually just me and him. It's all about me with him with someone else taking care of him, me going home working. And I I come to the point right now in my life that I don't have to work, even if I don't want it to. Like I can just take off. And but then I that's not who I am. That's not how I wire. And so this year I have a different goal. And I wanted to find a way to you say, don't change your goal, but change your approach. I wanted to change my approach on how I can work less, how I can attract more talented people in my team, in my life, to help me achieve my goal, but at the same time, spend more time with my son and actually be a mom, enjoy being a mom, not just have someone be his mom. Mm. And that, that is my value. And you know what? It was shocked to me because Every year I do this kind of exercise similar. And for the last three years, he was never came up in my, my vision, my value. He never came up. And for some reason this year, he came up into my value, into my vision. And thank you for it. That's awesome. That was awesome. I love that. Seriously. That's, so cool. That's awesome. That's great. Makes me happy. So we're gonna take a minute, which boy, what's what guys? Thank you for for sharing. Um, thank you for being honest and real and authentic. Uh, you start to realize that there's not a lot of differences between most of us. We think that, you know, 
that everyone's so different. They're, we're, 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 we're all pretty wired, about the same. And we almost all have the same needs. And you start to recognize that, that there's those moments of clues that you start to see. And so the two things I've learned in my life in the sense of how I learn is that I've run from my own mistakes and my own failures, or it has been because I've watched other people go through something that I learn from, or I learn because they say something or they step up, or I learn from their own experiences. Those are the two ways I found myself learning, my own errors and then others. And I hope that you're learning a ton today because there's a lot to be said. Okay, so goals. What I want you to do, if you can, just there's, there's basically five areas that I want you to write down here. And I want you to write down at least three goals in each. Now, I realize that you may not achieve all of them. And we, we will finish up with talking about what are some of the key performances in regards to your plan and your schedule and how you hold accountable. But just here's, here's question number one. What do you want to buy? And you say, man, that seems so significant since we've been talking about these values. But I think you need to know what is it that you want to buy? And even if it's what you want to buy for someone else. There was a local, local lizard down here by, by the Market Street Grill. Some of you remember that. And I remember pulling out a notepad and handing it over to Jennifer. And I said, hey, what is it that you want to buy? And she wrote down a boat. And I went, a boat? Do you remember this? <laughs> And I'm all, a boat? We don't boat. We golf. <laughs> and she's all, no, I want a boat. And all of a sudden, some of you have some people that you really love in your life. You might be find it pretty inspiring to figure out what they want and that maybe you could be the connection to getting it. As you know, you know Jennifer had a pretty rough childhood, as I know some of you in here have had also. But her mother took her own life, and her dad drank himself to death after that. As Jen, if Kenzie that, you know, a few months later was born, we were sitting there, him taking his last breaths. And the thing that she reflected on at that little dinner, we were having a local lizard with a little yellow notepad, where she says, the only times I remember my father being good to me and nice to me was on a boat. Uh -huh. <clears throat> so we're on our third boat <laughs> because I still yell on the boat. So I'm not the nice guy. I'm, you know, I have, I call it no excuses. Like Isaac's like, it's the way, it was how you pulled me up. No, no excuses. It's the name of a But my point is, is that you have a boat because of what it represents. And all of a sudden, the goals mean so much more to you. All of a sudden, prospecting means so much more to me. It, it meant knocking on a door had so much more purpose to me because I knew what it would do and the difference that it made just because of a simple little boat. So just don't forget that your goals really help you also live out some level of your purpose, but they're not the purpose, but they can become very purposeful. So just again, what do you want to buy? Second, wait, the three things on each was well, we go through this exercise. Number two is write down, <clears throat> what do I want to do? What do you want to do? Right, when I say do, it could be, maybe it's a mission, a, a mission for some of you. Maybe it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, 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 a triathlon, a marathon, I mean, whatever it is. I mean, hike a certain mountain, hike a number of mountains. I don't know. What does he want to do? Third, write down, where do I want to travel? Where do I want to travel? And fourth, fourth, who do I want to help or serve, bless, give to? Just three things you want to do in your life where you make a difference in the life of another human being or another or maybe it's an organization, which of course is human beings and maybe a group of people. But just take a moment in those four quadrants and just what do you want to do? Where do you want to go? Who do you want to help? What do you want to buy? And just write down three things in there. And then once you write that, we're going to go to a fifth little goal setting. And the goal setting will be what you earn and how many deals you'll do. But once you know your values, this is how I've done it for years. Once I know what I value, and once I know now what my goals are to hit those values, then I know how much money I need to earn. Well, then I now really know how much I need to prospect. Now I really know how much I need to knock, how many doors I need to knock on, or how many deals I need to do. And all of a sudden, those deals aren't just, well, I'm going to try to do 21 deals. Where did you come up with that number? I don't know. It just felt good. But like, okay, it's 25% increase. Well, that's the level of your goal setting. You feel the energy in this room. It's a whole different level of setting 
of goals and the understanding of what you value most, make sure they're connected. Okay, just take, we'll take about three minutes. Okay, three minutes. Write down three goals in each one of those sections. This is long term, like not just for the year, right? Whatever you want. I'd say, you know, it's a good question. Short term, long term, I, 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 I'm whatever is important to you, whatever is going to move you and drive you towards something. So just, just out of curiosity, by the way, isn't there such a cool energy in this room, by the way? Mm -hmm. After I stopped talking, I started getting more choked up just looking at you guys. And it's so so meaningful to me to see what's meaningful to you. So it's awesome. But uh, Paul, pick on you. Give us a give us something you want to buy and the reason you want it. A boat. A, a what? A boat. A boat. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And why do you want a boat? What's important uh, about a boat? Yeah, you know, so I, I'm... I'm huge into fishing, so I just want to take I take my son to anything that's older, and cool. you know, you know, take my family out there. So yeah, yeah. so I'll, I'll do what I if I was sitting one on one with you, I'd say, well, how important is that boat? Like, is it out like on a scale of one to ten? Ten. A ten. Yeah. So it means a lot, yeah. and it rep it's got to represent probably a little more depth than just that. What? Can't speak right now, but it does. I mean, like I've always, uh, or certainly did as a kid. I always like thought it was nice. It'd be great to have a boat because you know, uh, you know, my family, you know, my mom and dad are old talked about the uh, old days and how I get to work to get up to see to provide for the whole village fish. And to me, that's it, you know, it's, it's kind of like a, a to my heritage, mm. to my family. Wow. So not just a boat. Mm -hmm. yeah.
Awesome. That's our good. You're getting me choked up. It's awesome. <laughs> Didn't know boats could make so many people cry. <laughs> yeah. Is that great? <laughs> and getting out to be like all of a sudden you can see where it's like, boy, that boat means kind of everything. Well, but more than just a boat, right? It's not even the name of the boat, although he may have a, an allegiance to one brand or another, but it's not that. It's the experiences, it's the heritage, it's the history, it's his parents, it's his son. I mean, my goodness gracious, all of a sudden, I mean, I would suspect that prospecting might be a little more meaningful this week if you don't forget about the boat right all of a sudden you're feeding with your boat all the things that you value most i mean just think about that jose what about you what a goal like a fight or you want to vote just kidding don't worry yeah, right no but what what give me a, give me one of your goals in regards to what you want to buy yeah an give me a buy property pardon an investment property and what's important about an investment property uh, just financial freedom and then my kids those are Things that I value the most, and I want to leave them something behind so that they don't grow as much financially. Yeah. Yeah. It's fantastic, right? Part of your legacy. Yeah. And the key is, right, is not to forget about that. Your legacy and you as a father and what you want to provide, right? You start tying these goals into those values and they match right up. I mean, it's 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 pretty powerful. Anybody like just dying to share that I haven't picked on? Anybody? Um, that's not really like a something. I guess it is a something. But have you heard of like blitz or chill organizations like the snowboard program? No. So what that is is like they go out to like the uh, I don't know. I guess areas where it's not really that available. Okay. You get that's like a fifty dollar payment, and you get rentals, lessons, and bus uh, for the whole duration of like night skiing up right. Okay. And so it's a opportunity for people to. You know, snowboard. Who never would have if they didn't have the right, right, aspect. right. So, uh, for me, you know, getting dropped off in the mountain when I was seven, eight years old, and that's where I found my purpose. My friends, my family, didn't necessarily have that like at their home life. So I feel like being able to do that and have the money to have that organization and do one of my own <clears> is definitely important. And it's something I've tried to keep on the last few years. And Very cool. Talked about, you know, but that's the goal. But obviously, that would be like more of like the nonprofit stuff. Yeah, yeah so I it's fine. To, Great. I need to make the money, you know, this way. How important is it that you do that? Um, it's probably a nine. You know, other things kind of block our sure. sight of what is important yeah. and who we want to please and who we want to get approval from. But I think that, uh, you know, uh, just like reading the, mil the millionaire real estate agent, mm -hmm. you set that big goal and the little ones get accomplished you know, naturally. So I think that, you know, keep that in the vision. Okay. Awesome. There. Yeah, that's great, man. Appreciate it. Give me your name. I'm Shauna. All right, Shauna. Um, oh, I'm hesitant to share it, but <laughs> mine is a little different. Mine is uh, paying off debt to my lawyer. And um, that I, sounds exciting. <laughs> I've paid lots of debts to lawyers. <laughs> um, or, I, I went through a divorce that took about five and a half years and some dollars in debt. And it, my ex used a, a legal stuff as a way to just try and um, keep me down, I guess. Sure. So paying it off is freedom. It's the end of a nightmare in the beginning of a dream. Yeah. I love it. And my head's already computing. Wow, that's like 15 homes. Go do it. <laughs> you can. Yeah. You're in the right place to be able to do it. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. It's great. <laughs> I, I, what I'm hearing is one of your greatest values is uh starts with an F, which is freedom. <laughs> you know, all you weirdos out there thinking something else. I think it's totally that rats all of us here. See, Kelly's not laughing. He's like stone cold. <laughs> all right. Right? But freedom. Freedom. All right. Out there. Let's pick on someone out there. Jocelyn, Mike. <laughs> Jocelyn, give me a goal. Um, I want to pay for my mom's um, she had me when she was super young. She could do that, and sometimes I feel like I wouldn't have been born. She would have. 
Those are dreams. And I feel like I owe that to her. Dude. See her die. Wow. That's amazing. That's incredible. <laughs> I have no doubt you'll do it. Yeah. That's awesome. My goodness gracious. So cool. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Lourdes, how about you? Give me a goal. <laughs> Give me a goal. Any one of those things. Just want one or two more of you share and have one just last finishing thing. And I've totally messed this thing up. We are supposed to drop for break a little bit here in the middle of for lunch, but oh, too much fun. So Lourdes and then Nancy. Nancy. She's already wiping tears and she hasn't even spoken, Nancy. One of my dear friends here, but I'm um, gonna block it out so I don't cry. That's right. That's right. <laughs> just no, no emotion. <laughs> hey, we realize like this, she's kind of got herself. Just, just remember the statement I've made for years, which is treat everybody you meet as if they're going through the most difficult moments of their lives. You don't know what people are carrying. You don't know what they're going through. They I mean, be. you've learned more about right, Zach and Jocelyn and 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 uh, my gosh, I almost called you your sister, but. Lou, right, <laughs> right, but Lou and and you know all these different things. You see that, and you, you know, and so maybe you've been so so willing to share. It's awesome, and what you see is that that is you know I think what Amy said. You evolve through different stages of your goals and your values, as you you know saw that right at the beginning with Justin, and and you see that with Amy, and you see that where some wherever you guys are in that process. I look at like someone like Alan's got these two young toddler or infant and toddler, right? I mean, he's in a different stage. But just don't forget about these values and line them up with those goals. Because once all of a sudden you have that power, there's almost like, seems like nothing. Like you can just feel in the room, like, holy cow, it doesn't matter what's happening out there. We have that much behind you, that much emotion. And like, whether it's a boat or whether it's time with your son, Zen. And I mean, it, it, it's, it's making sure that you really are living the life that you're destined to live. Don't forget that. Lourdes, just give us a goal and then Nancy, and then we'll I want to switch gears for just a minute or two. Well, I, I know you for almost 12 years, and I remember when I started. I I only lost probably a, a deal, a couple of deals, and then I faithfully I remember being here every single morning and, and trying to to shape my you know structure my business, and then I start closing 12 and 20. And 40 deals, and I saw my life totally change because then I have all these checks and all the money. But one thing that made me think today is about family. And it was probably about seven years of my work, day and night, to try to get what would be the goal of making all these deals. And I remember I didn't have a chance to go to my kids' events. And my husband is the one who's always been there. And sometimes I regret that, but sometimes I didn't because I didn't know because I have a purpose because I was making a better living and have more vacations and more stability. But now that I've been in the company for 12 years, six years after, I started slowing down to be able to, to get more time with my family. And today, I think this, this class really helps me realize that I don't really need to change my goals. It's just the, you know, the approach. And I think there's ways because I have more knowledge. Uh, I have more experiences. I've been in the business for 20 years. And then I can really do it and be able to get that value, which is my family and a lot of other people that I want to help. So the whole thing, it turns into not just the money, but more than anything, these experiences, the feelings, the, the family. You know, when, when we have COVID, there's so many families and they're dead in my country. And when I start valuing, you know, wow, I wish I can help them. And when you want to have all this money and you don't have it, sometimes you're thinking, you know, what I can do to try to make the world a better place to live. And I think that's it's, it's all about. And in my goals, and I've been doing it for the last probably seven years. I've been putting it, I want to be wealthy. And I think I have a vision right now that I can do that with all my skills that I've been working so hard in the design department and the, you know, the, the, the business of lending and being a realtor. 
Century 21 really helped me a lot to be able to do that. And you've been such a great friend. Mm -hmm. You've been really blessing every mm -hmm. almost the last couple of years to start my business and to be confident in what I need to do in life. And that's been really a great blessing to have you, to have the staff to support us and be able to, even in the hard times, to still be here and share all of us, you know, our feelings, our emotions, because it's needed. Uh, thank you. You're awesome. Thank you. Um, our dear friend, I remember when you were going through all that. Lord has blessed her heart because friendly, you know, she 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 she's she's quite the Peruvian with her energy. And she'd come into my office and I would say, okay, and this is what I do. I don't know she told you this. I'd say, okay, before you say anything, let me tell you what the answer is. Go prospect. Go ahead. And then she she'd say something, I said, answer prospect yes prospect that's the answer and we always have fun with that and you have done dynamite things and incredible things and just to watch your journey and even the highs and the lows of it that's the beauty of life right right it's it's the vision of what the future this is all about the vision of what your future looks like guys just remember like the key is to not live in your past your past doesn't equal your future and sometimes we get really stuck Man, there's been some rough days, right? I mean, and, and even these, these shifts and man, it's not always easy to change the approach, right? We kind of old dogs, you know, trying to teach a new trick to some of us. And what well, you need to tell, I mean, I got to recreate myself just a little bit. Here. Yeah, you do. And that's not always easy. But just remember like your current circumstances, just as a reminder, your current circumstances do not equal your future. And if you think that they do, that is a problem. Come talk to me because I guarantee you, you can change. You are only just a few decisions away from a new life. Remember that, a few decisions away from a different life. So what you decide regards your goals, your values, what drives you, what's your purpose, man, it matters. It matters. Nancy. Yeah, so I, and then we'll go down. Yeah, so I've been blessed enough to um, been able to accomplish a lot of uh, my goals since I was a kid, which was my family and giving them a home. Um, with my past uh, career and this is a small world because I actually worked for Lisa then for the past 22 years oh wow yeah <laughs> small world right and I had no idea she was here but anywho I've uh, my new goal uh, last year I went back to my parents country in El Salvador and uh, I saw how much people need out there I mean poor in America is nothing compared to poor in a third world country. Yeah. It's nothing compared. It's like something you've never seen. So going there last year, I'm like, okay, my new goal is to create, I want to create some type of charity, some type of thing that I can give back to my country because I still have family out there and they, they need help. And so that's my new goal. So I love it. <laughs> well, that makes everything more purposeful, doesn't it? You can feel all that. That's the beauty of it. Alan, and then I'm going to wrap up. Yeah, I just want to briefly. <clears throat> Thank you. I'm a firm believer of, I like to tell people my goal. Can I just stop for a second? Can I just point something out? I just want to point out other country, other country, other country, other country. I find fascinating the level of gratitude and appreciation that comes from people. You know, this, this country gets torn down, ripped down so often. But it is awesome to watch some of the most successful human beings I've ever seen in business who cherish what I would consider, quote, the American dream, the ability. Some of us are so used to what we have that it is so normal to have what we have that sometimes we forget that what we do have and the abilities and the, the path. I mean, these two, I know for certain, were in refugee camps. I mean, what you guys have gone through and the examples you are to so many and what we have, and some of us just literally don't even realize what we have. I hope that you recognize that. So, sorry, I know well, I kind of... Say, honestly, everybody should go to a third world country and make sure appreciate what we really do have here. But I just want to briefly go over a couple of things <clears throat> just because it helps me hold myself accountable. So if I say it, you better believe I'm going to do it. Um, my goal for the year is I want to make at least a million plus. I've never made more than half a million, so I want to go for the million to push myself. Um, another investment property. One thing I love about an investment property is like two, three weeks ago, I gave myself a raise. I increased the rent of my condo from four thousand to five thousand. I gave myself a twelve thousand dollar twelve thousand dollar a year raise just by upping the rent. You control the asset. You control. You control that. Um, 
I want to go with the white Lambo this time. I already had a black uh, Lambo Hurricane on, so I want to go with the white one this time. Red interior, wrap the whole thing, the local real estate. Um, and not because of the car, because it's more than just that. It's what it represents. I love the fact that you have little kids come up to go, hey, can I take a picture? And then driving by to school, and kids going, yay. That is what it's all about. We get to share about everything else. That is what it's all about. Um, next year, next summer, I want to go for a chopper. Um, and then what I want to do... Go for a what? A helicopter? Yeah. Uh, for next summer. This summer, I'm going to go with the Lambo. And then... Oh, I got you. Okay. I do, so the one thing I want to do, I want to put it out there into the universe right now. You know, we have UVO, um, the, the real estate team, the real estate group. And we've also had UVO video marketing as well. We've been build, building both companies simultaneously. Um plan to build a media company to become a multi-million dollar company by the end of the year. Um, film our own TV show, film it, produce it, all that. Uh, another one, travel to Austria because I want my sister to meet little Drake. She met little Luna, but I want her to meet Drake. Um, number one thing is I want to be able to spend time with my baby. So right now I'm in the growing phase where I want to build, 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 and that way I can scale back and spend more time with them. What do I want to, who do I want to help to? Well, one family, my, my family, I want to pay for their trip to Cancun this uh, next month or two, and then also for Europe as well. Um, and then I want to help my, my girlfriend's mom move from Rose Park to Sugar House, where she grew up, and that's where we're currently at. Um, and she always wanted to go back, and I haven't told Sassy, but I want to make it a priority to help her get her mom over there, however it takes. Awesome. So, yeah, Good, goals. What's your mom's name? Aisha. Say it again. Aisha. Aisha. I just call her mom. But I went over to dinner over to their house. And I I mean, I've never felt so much love and appreciation. And and one, love all the goals and everything you're gonna do, and I know you're gonna do it. Uh, second, one of the things I've cherished in these moments is uh when I met his mother, you know, she basically leaps up and gives me a huge hug around my neck and kisses me on the cheek and says, Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And one of the things I remember so distinctly from Alan is when he made the commitment that he was going to buy a home for his own mother. And, you know, here she lives over there in Sandy. Uh, Jennifer and, and our family was were able to go over for dinner uh, this last summer. And I'm always touched by the fact of when you call out things like what you said you're going to do, Jocelyn and others, like what you're going to do and the reasons you want to do. But don't lose sight of that on a daily basis. Keep one of those things right at the forefront of your life, your moment, your energy, your emotion, because it's so fun to see those things happen and to just even be part of it. And there's so many things I know that each one of you, I haven't called on every one of you, but just, just recognize that, that I can see the emotion in many of your faces as people have spoken and choked up and you teared up. And I've watched many of you wipe a, a, a tear or two um, because it matters. That's the whole point. We're talking about your life. I would hope that there's some emotion around it. Okay, so just, because we might be here for another hour, just kidding. <laughs> All right, the last thing, write this down. How much money now that you've gone through this process, how much money will you earn? And how many deals will you do? And does your plan need to be adjusted? Just write it down. I'm just curious. Maybe it doesn't, and that's okay if it doesn't, but but where does it sit for you? Where does it economically sit for you? And now that you know what you want to achieve, whether it's paying off an attorney, buying an investment property, spending more time with Zen, right, her son, I mean, right, your mom, I hope that the number means something, because what I see too often is people write a number, and there's not enough emotion behind it. But if you can put all the emotion and all your heart and your soul because of what it means to you to hit that number or hit those, those deals, and real estate's going to be the easy part of this. It will be the easy part of it. So I sat at a little round table uh, 19, 21 years ago. 21 years ago, I sat at a round table about, I don't know, not too much bigger than than uh, that little sign there, but if it was round. And I sat there with a gentleman by the name of Robert Fillmore. Robert Fillmore uh, was uh, an incredible mentor and a, and a person that I still this day look up to and 
someone that I, I cherish my friendship and his leadership and his example in my life. And as I sat there, I came to him with all of my problems. I had sat down and I was the guy with the nice shoes and the great suit and the nice car out front. And I sat down with him and Robert was the owner and the broker of a uh, century or a, a realty executives at the time. And I sat there and I went through all of my challenges. And I remember, by the way, I'm 51 and he was 50 years old. And I know I've said this, but he pulled out a pair of glasses and he started looking at all the things I was showing him. And it was kind of all my problems, all my, my, my plight, my, my challenges, my economic things and all the things that were going wrong. And, and I, and I remember as he did that, he finally took his glasses and he set them down to the right of him and he lean forward on the chair. I'm like, oh my gosh, she's going to rip me a new one. And he didn't rip me a new one. He said what I just said to you earlier. He said, your current circumstances don't equal your future. But the second part meant more to me than that. And it was this. He leaned forward and he just simply said these words. George, I believe in you. And that changed the whole course of my life. That someone that I looked up to, someone that made a difference in my life, believed in me and believed that I was capable of solving the problem. Well, that year, we solved the problem. And I say that from the standpoint I still will never forget. Jennifer, you know, as the story goes, four or five months later, Jennifer is sitting in a stoplight over on uh, Van Winkle, as many of you have heard over the years. And we were doing so well. And we had a good friend that, that had uh, gone to jail for uh, white collar fraud. And I remember she leaned over and said, hey, can I ask you a question? I said, yes, and you won't be mad. No, I won't be mad. What's the question? Well, you sure you won't be mad? I'm like, I'm getting mad now. You're not answering, asking the question. And so she asked the question. She goes, I just need to know, are you doing this legally? And that is a fact because she said it changed so fast from such turmoil, such challenge, such difficulty to where that month in that April, 20 years ago, this April, this last April, we had 20 years ago was the day that I made $100,000, to be exact, 95. But we're realtors, we round up. It sounds <laughs> but I made 95,000 bucks. She asked the question if I was doing it because she had never seen such a thing. Because at that moment, I realized someone believed I could, and I leaned on that belief. And it is the reason why I say to you that there's nothing that you can't do, not in this business. And I, and I, and I know that there's proof all around you some of the most unskilled, untalented people you look at and go, how? Because they learned how. So there's no exclusive club. This is a meritocracy, right? You, you eat what you kill. And so that once you start to recognize that, man, I can do this whole thing. Someone believes in me. There's a program and a process to do it. Well, then what's the problem? And always the problem always is, is, is what you believe. So if you can't believe in yourself right now or... You can't, you know, wrap your brain around where you're really trying to go. Just for a minute, lean in on other people who have gone before you. See, I remember that young guy right there as a new licensee. I remember that Joanna Williams asked me if real estate would ever be sold. I can remember the number of years that Brenda Lee worked at Coldwell Banker. What, how many homes was the most you ever had sold before we met? 10 homes in a year. And today she's one of the top 25 agents in this company, which is really saying something because there's a lot of money made here. And my point to you is that that's the things that can happen when you start to believe. And again, if you can't believe, then just talk to someone who looks at you and sees you and sees you and says, I believe in you. How many homes did you sell your first year in business, Lou? 48. 48? Why not 50? Just kidding. <laughs> right, but 48 homes are first year in business. And how did you do it? Aside from belief and perseverance, do you what was the actual activity you did? Most of it? Prospect. And you did you call or knock? No. She knocked doors. 48 homes are first year in business. So I just want to point out to you, and she will tell you stories of people chasing off her off property and telling her to go back to her own country. <laughs> right. So I just would challenge you, like, what's your excuse? There shouldn't be one. There shouldn't be one. Every one of you should be making exactly the amount of money that you choose to make. Now, can that be a journey, a process, and stepping up through that? Of course. 
but don't discount yourself. Don't, don't believe that your past equals your future. Your family history doesn't equal your future. What your friends are doing or have done doesn't equal your future. You know, what people told you was possible doesn't equal your future. Your future is based on what you believe. It's based on people that you sit down with and who actually have been where you have been and have gone where you're going and have already done what you have done. And you sit down with them and you go, oh, wait a second, it's possible. Because that's what got me in the business. I saw someone, I was mowing lawns. And I saw someone doing some pretty extraordinary things in the business. And I went, whoa, whoa, if they can do it, I can too. And so I hope you're inspired by the BVs and the Amy's and the Justin's and the April's. And I'm, you may say, why well, am I pick? Because these guys are the guys making four, five hundred plus thousand dollars a year. Because there's a certain point once you hit survival and you get past a little bit of survival, what carries you forward is what you value and what puts purpose into your life. That's what carries you forward. Dustin doesn't need to know whether or not he's going to eat steak or chicken today. He doesn't need to wonder whether he's going to put gas in his car. He's not. He can drive any car he chooses to drive. And what do you drive today? I bought a new car. Ah, <laughs> five bricks. Oh, for how many years have you drove your, uh, with your path? What was it? The, wait, 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 Forerunner? Forerunner. Forerunner, how many years? A lot. <laughs> a lot. He died on the freeway. Like, that's how many miles. He's like, he's like the uh, Jeff Bezos who drove that little, what is his little Sentra around everywhere or something like that. It's funny because I remember that year we sold, I think, 207 homes. I remember parking around the corner for all the million dollar listings <laughs> and walking to it. <laughs> See? So just remember that, man. It's like, you're, again, you, you have so much. And what are you driving now? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm embarrassed. I don't even want to say it. Yeah. I bought a Range Rover. <laughs> I had a goal after I get X amount and <laughs> the beauty of it, man. It's the passion, it's the energy, it's the joy, it's the struggle, it's the grind, it's all of it. We'll wrap up your good. Here's something. When my first year, I actually looked up to Justin because I was, he, he did a lot of, well, one of the, I, I don't think I ever shared this with you, Justin, but one of the summit I went and I was here what he was talking about and all the things that he had to go through and all the sacrifice, you know, that he had to go through and gone off. And then in, and then I I actually texted you to have lunch with you. Thank you for going out to lunch with me and share his, what he did. And and I was like, well, if he can do it and someone have done it, they have to be a system. They have to be a way for, like, I couldn't achieve what he does, but they have to be a way at least for me to, to get even, like, 25% of what he made. And that's, that, that whole approach have changed. Because I look up to him, I say, if this man can do it, I could do it, too. Maybe 25% of what he does. <laughs> but then that means I, in financially, have the kind of money I want it to to pay off my student debt. And so thank you, Justin. I look up to you. So. Yeah. You guys, in closing, one, just, uh, I'll say it like I said today, and that is just, just I can't express to you how much I care for you and love each one of you. Um, you know, one of the things I've, I, I know oftentimes we'll use the word, I still remember one of my mentors, you can figure out who that is. And I would say, I love you. He'd say, I really care about you. I'd say, I love you. Really appreciate you. And I have to tell you that that has gone on for years. It still goes on today, just so you know. And um, uh, I do, though. I love this business, and I love the fact of who it requires us to become. And I love the fact that as you excel in your life and your business, it allows you to be more of who you really are. You know, to that point, right, as you're talking about someone like Justin, I've watched them rise through these things. And he's become more of who he is. And he has one of the best hearts that I know. I mean that, man. And uh, someone who has stood by me for a lot of years and had lots of reasons to leave, by the way. 
um, over the years because I'm just a crazy nut job at times. And, you know, and, and that's just the beauty of brotherhoods and friendships. And that's what this is about. So I'll leave you with this. This is it. <laughs> it's, quick, it's quick. I sat at a counseling session, Zach, years ago. I still sit at the counseling sessions, just so you know, because I'm, you know, I got to fix this thing, right? Who I am, right? Or, or get, you know, always working on me. But I sat in this coach's this session. I you even met the gentleman. He's one of my dear friends today. I retired, but I still spent a lot of time with him. His name's Paige Palmer. And I said to him, I said, hey, I came up with these two great questions. And he said, okay, what are they? And I said, number one, hmm, write these down. Actually, they might be worthy of writing down. But number one, I wrote down, I, I said, I, I, I want to decide, I ultimately want to decide what I want to do with my life. Now, this is years ago, just like, what do I want to do with my life, right? I mean, I think we all go through that moment. What do I want to do? And, you know, if I'm someone like even like a, an Isaac who is, you know, young in my career, he's 20 years old, man, is this really what I want to do? Is this what I, you know, we ask that, what do I want to do? And then I said, but question number two is the one I really want you to write down. And that is, is who do I want to do those things with? And it couldn't have been more than a millisecond that he responded back to me and said, oh, the first question's irrelevant. I said, what? Well, I gotta love what I do. He goes, you'll always love what you do, no matter what you're doing, as long as you're doing it with the people you want to be with. And so it is always my honor to be with you. I mean, that. it has made me realize, you know, what the journey that I've even been on through this process and all this consolidation, all these different things we've done, has made me really recognize what I love to do and who I love to be around. So I love being around you. I love what we're doing. Let's keep going. Let's go make it happen. I think there's lunch in there, right? And by the way, I've got to thank Miss Ruby Batia here because she's the one who had this idea for all of us to get together. And I'm so glad you guys showed up. So thank you, Ruby. And thank you. All right. That's in there.